Hello and welcome to another episode of The Digital Painter. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II and I'm The Digital Painter and I want to welcome you to what may or may not end up being a series on Corel Painter, one of my favorite programs. Now, the reason I've not really done much with Corel Painter before is because A, there's a lot of people who do videos on it and you're more than welcome to go check them out. And B, it is an expensive program. And what I tend to focus on are the less expensive programs that are used by artists because, you know, a lot of the people who watch my videos are hobbyists and they're not professional painters. So, uh, so that's the reason I've never really delved into it, but I have had a couple of requests to take a look at it. So I thought, hey, why don't we start and give it a try? Uh, now, what I'm going to do is uh, before we jump into that, I want to, for anybody that's new, I want to say welcome. If you haven't already, stop by thedigitalpainter.com. That's my website. You can check out all the videos. Now, some of the past videos fell under the Theater Professor moniker. That name has now changed to The Digital Painter. But you can check out all of my series on Art Rage, Procreate, uh, a whole bunch of different things. You know, some of them I continue to work on. Others, you know, have come to the end of their life. But uh, But definitely check it out. All right, let's go ahead, jump in here. Let me open it up. And here we are. You can see I've been kind of playing around uh, with it, uh, working on eyeballs. I'm a big fan of eyeballs. If you're new to uh, if you're new to my videos, then one of the things that you have to understand is that I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro. There we go. Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. Now for some of my return viewers, I finally had the chance to play with a Cintiq and I will tell you it's amazing I cannot wait till I can afford one the one that I played around with comes in at right around $2,200 not money that I make right now as uh, this is a hobby uh, and a side business but maybe one day if the you know if the business ever fully takes off I'm gonna have to look back into it because the Cintiq is amazing being able to draw directly on your uh, your drawing rather than you know, I have a pad here, and then you see my drawing up here. All right, so if you're brand new to Corel Painter, they just came out with Corel Painter 2016. And when you open it up, one of the things that you see is this right here. This is your welcome screen. It gives you some of the new things that are happening, uh, some of the extra content that you can actually purchase. There are some add-ons that you can purchase. It creates some really cool effects. You can get started in this area. We'll talk about this later on and then get inspired. And I, you know, I'm a big fan. I just kind of browse through these. Some of these things are are simply stunning. You know, you look at something as simple as a bamboo, but is a beautiful piece of art. And all of this is done in Corel Painter. You know, Corel Painter is very similar to Art Rage in that the, the goal is to mimic real world natural media. And so what you're going to see here is is that within the imagery that you look at some really beautiful stuff in here all right that's enough of my drooling over these pictures i've looked at them multiple times i can't stop let me jump back over here real quick what you'll see is there's some really some nice new things going on dynamic speckles this audio expression we're going to kind of talk about that as we move through this series i don't want to get all into that right now because that's just going to clutter this video what i want to do is we do want to get started one of the great things or one of the poor things about corel painter that you're going to see is that the ui okay what you what you're looking at is it almost harkens back to the old days of windows 3.1 for those of you that that have been on uh, computers that long you know, it's not pretty. It's not like like uh, if you look at Art Rage's canvas, it's very pretty. It looks very nice. It's something nice to look at even while you're working. This is this is less about the UI, less about the user interface. You can change it up. You'll see here you can arrange your user interfaces. There's a default illustration, new to painter, new brushes, photo art, and simple. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I like to work with the photo art. If you click it, you'll see what's going to happen. So it's going to change my screen. And it doesn't look any different because I've been using the photo art one. One of the really cool things about this is that you can actually create your own workspace. 
So the more you use it and the more you know what you enjoy having open and what you enjoy having closed, uh, you can start to create a workspace that helps your workflow move better. Like, for example, one of the things that I oftentimes open is my references image. So there's my reference image that I'm kind of playing on. And uh, so I have that open so I can kind of look at and start to uh, see uh, the image that I'm working off of. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as I was saying, one of the great things about this is it's really about natural media. And what we're going to look at today is I'm going to go ahead and f open up a new one. And we're just going to go very quickly through some of the natural media brushes. And then later on, we're actually going to push through and get more specific into the program. Really one of the cool things here, lots of papers to choose from. These are some 2015 papers, paper textures. Right now I have it on charcoal paper, but let's choose artist canvas. And I'm going to leave the color gray. I like to have a gray background. So here we go. This is our artist canvas. Now you can, if you want, it has a layer palette. You can, you know, pop the layers through and multiple layers. We're not going to worry about that right now because what I want to look at is I want to look at this dynamic speckles. This is a new thing this in 2016. And apparently, and yeah, what it does is, is they're trying to come even closer to mimicking real world brushes. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. See, I haven't played with these yet. I just got it. I was on vacation last week in Virginia Beach. And so I, uh, I didn't get it. I, I downloaded it, got it installed, but hadn't had a chance to play with it. I need to set something up on my... There we go. So let's see what other ones they have. That's uh, They're calling that a bristle soft cover pressure expression. This is a particle... Oh, look at that. It looks like my iCloud's being a bad boy. This is a particle chain grainy cover. Whoa. You can see there's a lot of different things going on, and we'll talk all about that later on. Let's see what else I got here. Particle grainy marker abrasive. Oh. Now, one of the things, if I zoom in, you can see. See that gray outline right there? That's what's... Oh, this is just like having a... Uh, Grainy edged marker. Oh my gosh, this is going to be fun to create little comics with. I love it already. I'm like a big kid when it comes to this. Now, I don't believe there's a way to clear the canvas, which always makes me sad. I mean, there is if you're doing it on multiple layers. So I'm actually going to start a new one, and I just hit OK, and there we go. I'm actually going to layer up this time so we don't uh, have to change to a new one. Let's see what else we got here. Particle plug in left twirl. Well, um, that may be a blending type tool. I'm going to have to come back and look at it. Ah, that's what it is. Particle Soft Cover Blender. So we need some colors down first. Particle Fire Starter Glow. <sighs> Ooh. Okay. This is fun. Let's see what else we got. We've got a real bristle drip. Looks like it's a blender of some sort. Okay, not bad. Not my favorite. Real Bristle Impasto Soft Cover. Now that's nice. That gives you some nice texture. And I, I mean, if you've if you've seen any of my work, you know I love texture. I don't like things flat. 
Oh, that's almost like a dancer. Oh, going to have to actually continue on this vein right now. Take my brush down a little bit. What am I at? One of the things I don't like about Krell Painter is it when you're adjusting the size of the brush via the Wacom, it seems to take a long time. Like I'm still waiting if you watch right here. 21, 20, 19. Where if you're doing it in Art Rage or Paintstorm Studio, it seems to move much quicker. Now if you click up there, you can adjust it much quicker. So I need to make sure that I'm darker here. It's got the feel of a dancer. I mean, an abstract dancer. I mean, I wouldn't call this a a real living dance. Well, maybe I would. I do weird things like that. Next up, we have real bristle soft. Ooh, we real bristle soft cover, and again, really nice. Some really nice things going on there. We've got a real wet worn bristle. Okay. Oh, it's a watercolor one. Eh, just put it on a watercolor layer. I didn't notice that. So if we turn off this layer, I grab some. So the way it works watercolor, yeah, for if you're new to Corel Painter, you'll see that it takes a moment and then it starts. Oh my God, that's gorgeous. That, my good friend, is gorgeous. I am definitely going to be playing with that brush. Hold on. Let's see what we can get here. Let that start to settle, come on top, let that settle into it. Oh yes, I found a new favorite brush. Let that start to settle. Okay, what do we got? We got Speckle Gravity Brush. Create some nice little comments. And then we finish up with spongy particles. Oh, it does. It feels kind of like a sponge brush. Again, I really like the texture and the way it blends. Now, you have a lot of control in these brushes. And again, we're not going to go on that this week. I'm going to come back up to some of these. This was a... Yeah, I can't get it to... Oh, that's right. We need to come down here. It doesn't see oh, it does. There we go. Okay, that one's fun. That's that plug-in left twirl. This was another blender. Oh, wow. I wonder if you can do that. I probably can't do it. Oh, I can do it. Okay. And then, uh, was there just one other one? I don't remember. Oh, the real bristle drip. Oh, we looked at that one. Not as impressive, no, or at least not to me. So that is, as you can see, that is some of the real world media types that it can create. Corel Painter does that a lot. And, and it, you know, Corel Painter is a, it's a very old program. It, um, it's, you know, it's not like Paintstorm Studio. It's been around a while. And so it's had time to mature and grow. And you'll see if you look over here, you've got acrylics, airbrushes, oils, um, the audio expression, which I have not played with. But so, for example, you choose your audio settings and enable an audio input um, while observing the uh, check that the brush uh, windows brush. I mean, this is interesting. I'm, again, this is one that I'm, I don't know enough about. I'm going to have to kind of play with it. But it listens to your computer and then based on what it hears, it creates things. Cloners we'll get into later on. Uh, there's some FX stuff, like water bubbles. Oh, that's a blender, though, so I can't do that here. But you've got a marble rake. Some of these are blenders. A glow, a fog jitter, a distorto. Um, 
You've got uh, Impasto. Probably said that wrong. I'm horrible with actual names. Liquid ink markers, oils, all of these that we're going to play with over time. And hopefully create things as we as we play with them. Realized I don't have a new layer. There we go. This is dry ink sumi two. We've got flat ink. So what I'd like you to do is if you're watching this on the website, leave some comments on which of these brushes you'd like me to focus on first. If you've never used Corel Painter, uh, then you know just kind of check back through this oops, through this area right here and look at some of the names. If you have used Corel Painter and you wanted me to go a little deeper, leave a comment in the uh, in the notes and I'll kind of go through whichever one my uh, my members want me to look at uh, initially. So for example, this is an oil. Um, I always pick blenders. There we go. And maybe we'll create some things, you know? Like we did, uh, we've done a couple of times, but I think that might be fun. So just let me know. Leave a message. This was, again, just a quick look at, uh, at Corel Painter, just to kind of start to get us into it. There's, a, there's other new items that I haven't even, you know, if we go back to the welcome, you'll see the audio expression. There's enhanced blending. It used to pull up the white. It doesn't anymore. Uh, you know, once we start looking at the watercolors, you're going to be amazed. So well, you know, let, let's figure out what we want to do. And uh, particles and liquid ink. I mean, this is some really cool stuff. And we'll kind of move from there. This is all about you guys. My videos are back up and running. I know it feels like it's been forever. The summer's been crazy. But you will get them back on a more consistent basis. I also want to point you to the new podcast that I'm starting, the Digital Painter Podcast. It's uh, it's going to be a combo of things. You know, It's not going to be video, which is what I do right here, where I go through different items. What it's going to be more about, it's, it's going to be talking about inspiration, talking about you know, where ideas come from, how we create our paintings, our digital works, where we can share them, that kind of thing. Okay. So I'm still going to, you know, I'm doing two types of vidcasts now. I'm doing these type that look at the technology, but then I'm also doing, we're starting to work in some vidcasts that deal with technique and how to use the technology to create what we want to create. Uh, so, so keep an eye on those, but also moving into the podcast. And then of course the blogs are starting to pick up a little bit over the next couple of weeks as well. As I get a little better at writing, I'm a terrible writer, much better when I'm sitting here talking to you guys in front of the camera. For those that are curious, yes, I did indeed finish all of season eight of Doctor Who, did it all within two, two days. So I know some of you guys get to watch now season nine. Well, I have to wait for it to come on Netflix. So I've got to wait till next summer. Sadness. All right. That's it for this week. Uh, you know, just kind of a little basic intro to Painter. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, wonderful. Hit subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube and you're on the website, become a free member. Click the join button. It's awesome. You get some perks. All right, that's it for this week. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I am the Digital Painter.